Hello everyone, this is a gray shot 17 doing a replay in CH2. It's a 1v1 submitted by it's really it's really hard to man who would out of either of those two people would probably send a replay. I'm gonna guess and say it's not the guy saying the fail, but you know it's just me. In any case, you want to submit a replay, you can just see my Gmail and or Facebook in Gray Shot. You could be saying to, uh, you can say to me, hey, um, why aren't you doing another game? Let's say a 3v3 or 4v4, and let's say on a random map called Steps or something like that. Well, I mean, like, why, why, why wouldn't you be doing those replays, like the ones I submitted you, uh, just randomly? Um, it could be the fact that most of the games I've received recently had people drop in the first minute, which might be the reason why there's a server. Uh, well, not server, but yeah, they're resaying the servers in about 12 hours, which is why I'm trying to get some replays done. Maybe that. I mean, just going on a limb, just really far out there and saying that could be it. But uh, we'll see what happens. You know, I'm confident that this will be an interesting game. Uh, we have a, well, again, Soviet versus OKW, who went fortification, which... Wow, man, um, just so nice, the fail is, and I can't wait to see you die. I really hope. I, I really hope. Anyway, this map Crossroads. So if you, do, you don't know what this, what, why it would be called Crossroads, it could be any of these roads that lead to this junction point that you can then go into every other road. So it's kind of like a Crossroads, as you will, or something like that. But you know, just throwing it out there. C could be, com could be for some other reason on this map. Maybe it's uh, um, this point on the map or uh, this point. I also want to point out just. Just randomly. Um, so, again, we have the OKW player here. was this point out and over over here, like this area. And then you have the Soviet player who has that area and here. So, on this map, I very easily see someone could literally just camp someone in their base. And they would be unable to do anything. Like, just put an MG here, put an MG over here. And, yeah, the enemy would be pretty screwed trying to get out. Anyway, let's actually look at the game, shall we? We have OKW player pushing on up. So, fail... Yes, I'm going to call him that the entire game. Fail. Fail is capturing territory pretty deep in the Soviet lines. And the Soviet player is unable to really cap. He went double. Okay, that's interesting to say the least. Because usually I don't see double engineer. Maybe he did that for capping reasons early on. I don't know. But he's getting penal troops out. We do have a Stern Pioneer squad grabbing a bunch of territory. Penal is now moving in on the Volk squads, which are now being flanked. Very nice. Might be able to end, again, smart moving in the cover. Volk squads had clear advantage, but alas, fucked it up, and uh, at least tried to come back with a nice fire grenade, but there is still a key issue with, literally, again, we have multiple guys coming in, multiple areas, opening fire. He might be able to kill a penal squad, because for some reason, guy won't retreat, but AB does finally retreat him. Surrounding the Volk squad, which, by the way, in case you were wondering, yes, this entire time he could have used the Stugis cover, but alas, he did not. I don't know why he didn't, I don't know what his reasoning was, but been probably very smart for him to do so. I also see a bunch of cars just kind of grouped up here. And I'm just like, okay, so what is the what's the story behind here? Did someone have a, a car accident, another person have a car accident, another person have a car accident? It's like like was there a convoy here and they just started hitting each other? Like that's yeah, that's a that's a weird assortment of vehicles just kind of grouped up. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Anyway. We got a Stern Pioneer squad who forgot to move the Minesweeper, so he's charging a bunch of troops, which he would have been way better off without the Minesweeper for more, you know, better combat effectiveness. But no, he's still going to keep on walking, ignore that, maybe kind of divert the troops while the Volk squads move on up. I don't know. I, 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 ju I, just, I just don't know. Meanwhile, with only a couple squads compared to ABU having now five squads, I, I suspect ABU to capture a huge portion of territory rather quickly. Nice job also using heavy cover. Team Soviet players like, I'm going to go for cover, while the German players like, I'm just going to use men. Nice fire grenade out, throwing it over and at least setting it ablaze so that it should push him out, that we can still use the bush and the wall to kind of help himself out. We'll see how things go. We'll see how things go. Penal troops moving on in to reinforce the line. Volk squad should be easily pushed back with all these penal troops. Again, they did kind of nerf penals in like small ways, but still, overall, even with the patch that has happened recently, um, the oh wow, nice mine. And maybe that's why he had the minesweeper, but again, just don't go that way. Um, overall, penal troops are still more effective than Volk squads in direct fire, though again, you get Volk squads up to VET 5 and SCG 44s, that, that, that's a different story. 
let's see, we have a Soviet Reserve Army, we have Soviet Shock Army, and we have the Guard Mortar Coordination Tactics. Which one of these do I think would be best? Uh, I don't, Soviet Reserves I don't think would be that great because there aren't too many vehicles you could, I, mean, I guess there's a couple buildings, but it's not really a huge urban dense map, so I don't see like popping on a partisan squad to be all that effective. Uh, Soviet Shock Army could be effective with the artillery, you could very easily start hitting the enemy base, and with the cover of these high brushes, you can kind of position the artillery sort of like back here-esque or somewhere else and just start pounding the base, though he would have to worry about the fortification area. So I'm assuming what he's going to go is guard mortar for the heavier tanks, heavier infantry combo. Uh, though it would be weird to have the PTRS rifles equipped with the penals and then, then get guards rifle infantry. That's just me. But we'll see what they do. MG in the building. It's just being placed, and it should hopefully push them back again. We'll see how things go. MG opening fire on the penal troops, suppressing them. Very nice. We have a push on the left with penal troops capturing the fuel. With another MG being deployed on that front, but looks like being flanked by an engineer squad trying to pick off a couple men. You have the, I like how this one guy's like, guys, we're, guys, guys, we're being flanked. And the guy's like, no, we got them. It's like, no, 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 guys, you don't understand. They're to work. Hey, what happened to Hans? No, ignore it. We don't need... We Don't worry about him. We got them. Yeah, and the, and the reason I keep bringing this up is this squad is literally destroying this MG. So this penal squad can just be like, cool, we'll wait until we can actually start firing again. And I like how this guy's like, no, we're going to get closer. That's what we need to do. Let's get closer to hit these penal troops while we're still being lit upon from behind. Oh, good. Volk squad's finally come in, but this, this MG's probably going to die. Yep, there it goes. Oh my god, on this, like, that guy's like, guys, isn't it, isn't it awesome we didn't move? And he's literally the only one there, and he's like, barely clinging on to dear life. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't just walk around the corner, and just for some reason, his body just splits in two. Like, he was peppered so much by shots that he's like, barely holding himself together. Anyway, Penal Squad's capturing the right-hand territory, though right next to the base, so they should be easily able to recapture it. We have a Verken Werfer, so AT deployed. Oh, look! My time in 2H2 has allowed me to detect what the basic per- or not basic, but what, what, what a user would most likely pick in this engagement. So, yay, I have no life. Um, but that's why you watch me, because I have no life spent on 2H2, and then you're like, hey, this is interesting, and watch the game. Heavy Mortar coming out. The 120 is nothing to- trifle with and it should be able to easily push back that mg in that building by blowing it to kingdom come so very cool penal troops moving on up to help the mortar out and this mortar actually would be pretty damn good if it just moved up to this point i know he's like cover but you don't really need cover you just move it there and then all you have to do is make sure the front's you know okay and you don't throw maybe a grenade through i'm actually i'm gonna be surprised if they could throw the grenade that far through it and it would not be hit by the tree because you figure again it just by any luck and for, and for those who ever, like, were like, hey, unfortunately, we can't play ball out, so let's play in a slightly wooded area, and then every time you throw the ball, it hits a tree, and you're like, god damn it. <laughs> Look, you tried. You tried. It's not working. You just wait for the, per the people to leave on the street, and then you go play baseball there. Nice job blowing up the building. It's barely alive. MG uh, repositioning itself to this small building, which actually is not too bad. There is a small bush covering that area, so hold on. Can you see? Still see? Yes, you can. So, should be able to fire from all directions. So good for them. Uh, what is going on? So, penal troops are just hanging out. I'm assuming they were placing a mine, but kind of failed. I do like how his minesweepers, I just feel like in most scenarios that as long as you know there's a mine isn't there, put away the minesweeper and start fighting. That, that's just me. MG opening fire on the last little bit of infantry retreating. Overall, cap points is going to the German player, slowly pushing down the Soviet player. Again, right now he has three penal squads, so it's not like he's two down infantry. I do question the Verkenwerfers, but I'm assuming you think that the Soviet player is going to quickly rush armor, which couldn't be the farthest thing from the truth. He's not. So, and again, hindsight's 2020. And for people who are like, oh, Gracia, why are you so negative on replays? I'm actually not. I'm not even that bad on replays. But I will point out certain strategies like decapping this point. Pretty smart. Again, because you cut off a lot of, you cut off the supply lines. Which is why, like, these points along the quarters are very important. You cut that off, you stop the enemy from pushing up, and you can at least have your side pretty much under your control. Though it looks like, again, we have the 
Soviet player, even though that the, well, the German player did until they didn't. They did. Well, no, they will because they're capturing the right hand side. I like how it's like, well, I'll capture your fuel. Well, fine, I'll capture your fuel, and they just keep going back and forth. Meanwhile, I'm looking down, my cat's staring up at me like, oh god, please don't jump at the cord and disable my mic. That would be great, thank you. The penal troops in, uh, well, along with a engineer squad moving on up, but the MG should suppress them through the building. Sure, why not? You haven't even activated armor piercing rounds. Fire through the building, but hey, get in the building and uh, hold them back, I guess. What? Whatever. Or, or just stay out on the main road and get flanked by a flamethrower unit. However you want to spend your day, MG. However you want to spend your day. I like how the squads can be suppressed from this one guy who didn't move. But once again, the combat engineer squad manages to do the flank and push them back. <sighs> again, I, 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 I don't find, like, again, I have no problem with you going for Kenworfer if they had armor. And it's not like you can't, how do I put this in the best way possible? What is that? Oh my god, what? Oh, nice mine placement. Oh, that's evil. I like that. I like it a lot. Um, you put a sphere, uh, the Panzer headquarters. I get it. You want to help defend, but that's a weird placement because they're actually blocking the road a little bit there. So that's weird. You have the, uh, flame squad. Hopefully they can capture some territory and lure them in, which will also be great. MG slowly pushing up. Volk squad's kind of forcing that penal squad back, but the flamethrower squad's just lying in wait. Very cool. Indeed. Meanwhile, the Soviet player is just kind of just chilling. Now he's actually building some armor. So again, also you really, okay, so I could see a scout car playing a role, but as long as you have Volk squads, Panzerfaust, and you have more than enough munitions. We now have almost some Dotten being made. I could, okay, I could see that being effective. We have, where is it? Okay, smoke being deployed here, I guess, to counteract the MG so the penal troops can move in and be like, hey, do you like satchels? Because we do. Volk squads moving on in. Trying to help out. But once again, I feel like cover would be very effective. Nice flame. At least, you know, pushing them back in closer so the SCG-44s can do their work. But you are close together. So, yep, there we go. I was going to say, mortar just needs to come down and do quite a bit of damage. And lo and behold. Oh, boy. Yeah, retreat. Now, will that three-star squad survive? Nope. Unfortunately, he came down with a tad case of... Uh, uh, third degree burns, you know, just a small case of it. So unfortunately he didn't last very long uh, MG once again trying to capture some territory by itself risky maneuver But looks like it might pay off if you can suppress that unit and hold it back We have Additional guards infantry coming out. So quick. Yep <laughs> DP light machine guns included Improved anti-infantry again kind of important Nice job suppressing the infantry now the problem is well, additional forces coming in. I like how he's placing mines everywhere. He knows he killed the goddamn Stern Pioneer squad, so he's like, well, now I don't have to worry about the Minesweeper. So now I can just place mines everywhere. Which, to be fair, thumbs up, man. Thumbs up. For Canwerfers moving over to provide supporting fire, and then I laugh and think, oh, yeah, they're AT guns firing supportive fire. Don't be wrong. In real life, if you were hit by a rocket and somehow still lived, I salute you, sir. I salute you. What was it? God, who? Oh, I'm trying to think of the leader that. Oh, yeah, it was Bismarck. Goddamn, Bismarck just walking down the street. A guy goes up with a pistol, fires five shots at him. Again, the guy's quickly arrested. Bismarck literally, like, like is looking at a guy. The guy's, like, going through Bismarck's stuff. At, I, extra history. Highly recommend it. Oh, mine only got one guy. All right. Um, but anyway, Bismarck literally. <laughs> Which, like, all five shots, point-blank range, missed. Or grazed. So, it's like, the guy made the comment of, like, Bismarck. Oh, yeah, it was extra history. Yeah, this is where I got it. Um, he, like, he looked at the guy, put on some shades, and said, Iron Chancellor. <laughs> anyway, MG moving on up. We have some, uh, penal squads. Hiding in the building. Fire from all directions. So I guess it's kind of effective, but also done. Wow, they're low on munitions right now, so that could be a key issue. We have a T-3485, so yeah, he just rushed it. So now at the 15-minute mark, we have our first actual armor unit. Wow. Nice hit. Those, those poor units. 
Penal Squad's being suppressed, but I feel like are they T-3045 rolling down the street? They have some issues. Now again, wide supportive, a uh, wide number of units with uh, great abilities all around. Each different, each unique compared to MG. Uh, again, uh, MGs which are fine, but not really a lot of frontline infantry. And I'm seeing a big issue with that. Should probably have some more frontline infantry. Now, if you can lure the T-34 85 into a trap and Panzerfaust it, I see a huge win. But I don't see enough Volk squads to allow that. And before you say, Grayshot, why doesn't... Oh, God, he's getting also done. Why is that an issue, Grayshot? Well, first off, he has 156 fuel, right? Right? Okay, so let's double check here. 185. So he could deploy a Panther. Now, a key issue would be a uh, Satchel Charge. Now, he doesn't have the upgrades for it, but he very easily could. Or buttoning of the vehicle, which, once again, could be a big issue. But again, something that could be done to, again, stop the Panther and allow T-3045 to roll it. But, yeah, I feel like he honestly should get a Panther at this point, not Obel Sedan, because Obel Sedan are great against infantry, and that would be fine, but he needs to really work on stopping this thing. Alright, double for Kenworthers opening fire. Looks like they got, again, both hit. Now they're hitting the the small shack and have lit the place ablaze by hitting the barrels. Obel Sedan slowly pushing on up. Managing to pretty much own everything that's way. Is that MG? Oh, okay, it's repositioning. I was like, wow, all right, didn't see that on how it got suppressed. Then I look at the double MG, I'm like, oh, that's hell. Major counterattack and nice Panzerfaust with one squad. The one squad I need to actually got it. So yes, I again, congratulating him. I'm not denouncing him, I'm, good job. Again, with one unit, I, I was a little bit surprised you actually got the hit, but hey. Manage it correctly. You got the Obel Sedan guarding against the penal troops. And looks like you should be able to do a lot of work. Now, if you can kill the heavy mortar, then that would also be helpful. But again, watch out for the MG because it's right there. I like how he's repositioning now. He's like, yes, let's move an inch. Somehow doesn't lose more men from that bundle grenade. Kind of shocked about that. But he's literally being destroyed. Uh, not a lot of munitions, though, for the fail guy. So even though uh, he's doing quite well, he still has a smaller army. So he has to worry about that. Probably should retreat that unit. Just not pull it back. Obel Sedan doing a great job at just mowing down all those troops. Obel Sedan, fantastic if you get them upgrade, especially with SCG-44s. We got a grenade going out. Unfortunately, it did do quite a bit. And with the MG now opening fire, yeah, yeah, there, there's going to be some issues. Oh, boy. Nice bundle grenade, though, almost killing that unit. Very close. But now we have double T-3045. And while the Vrakan Warfers are great, that's armor. That can be uh, quite a bit mobile and can hopefully go around it. So he really needs that uh, unit back up and running. Unfortunately, we have penal troops coming out on the flank. That MG or satchel building if they get in. And also capturing left-hand territory. So that's the problem with having a lot of troops at your disposal. You can go across the map. Sure, you can engage the enemy. And oh my god, are you seriously pushing into it? That MG will open fire upon you, at you. And you're firing through the brush. I don't know how you're firing through the brush. But you are. And you knocked out his main gun. So bravo for Kenworthers. I would now retreat. Oh, we tried to do direct fire. Okay, nice attempt. And get the hell out of there before you get destroyed. Right now, the Soviet player does have a majority of the capture points under his control. So we're slowly putting pressure on the German player via that. Also, we knocked out the supply uh, route. So right now, again, a lot of those uh, areas in which the Germans actually have under control are now cut off because of the junction point has been knocked out at this point. So, uh, yeah, things are not going to go well. We have a Jagdpanzer. Okay. Okay. Not what I would call out, because if he has multiple tanks, you only know he has one right now, but you can make the assumption if he gets multiple tanks, this thing is not good. It will hold the line if you have a line, but so far you've been unable to keep a line. If you tag team that with your Vrakan Warfers, I could definitely see it being effective. But right now with your infantry problem, I could see the line collapsing T-34 or E-5s rushing the front line using Mark Target. Again, I, I, I don't make the assumption you know every single doctrine, so it's hard to make that. But 
yeah, it, let's just on the basis of the T-3045s. Yeah, they could rush the line, sneak up behind, the T uh, behind this thing, and do an incredible amount of damage to knock out the T-34. Uh, uh, sorry, knock out the Panzer. So the Ag Panzer, again, has the advantage if the Verkenwerfers act with it. Let's see if it does. Verkenwerfers opening fire. Double fire and... Okay, one hit. Not too bad. Also, Don rushing the T-34 for some reason instead of falling back in heavy cover. I see this unit dying from just a lot of fire. Nice bundle grenade, except for the fact he retreated. Again, I don't know why you just throw that. Also, Don trying to get... I... They're overextending. I see it dying. Because we don't have the Verkenwerfers for to support. We just have one Jagdpanzer firing on two T-3045s. Now, they're going to push up and be like, Hey, why don't we kill a Jagdpanzer today? We have a marked target going out on that Yag. And now we have a flanking maneuver going in with the Soviet infantry coming around the back. Does he have additional infantry coming in? No, he has a Stern Pioneer Squad. Not a bad idea because, again, you have to heal this thing, so you do need that. But right now, you do not have enough men to hold back all the infantry. The MG is facing the wrong way or, sorry, not turned enough to stop that. And we have a Volk Squad trying to hold back that one guard troop, so not too shabby. T-3485s are holding back for the time being. Looks like trying to get me from multiple directions. Kind of cleared up the pileup, which is very nice. Again, I think the Germans have a pileup. We'll deal with it with the Soviet threads and just run it all over. My bro By the way, speaking of Soviet threads, my brother had an argument. Why would he in a zombie apocalypse ever, like... The U.S. Army and every other army in the world just get a bunch of tanks, round up the zombies, and run them over. To be fair, that's a great strategy, but if you're wondering why you don't do that, highly recommend you check out the book World War Z, which I had to explain that on. Nice satchel, and I'm very surprised you didn't retreat that, and say goodbye to all the Opus Don squads, because that was the last squad. And I doubt, I doubt so much he's going to be able to get another one. Anyway, Jagdpanzer chasing down the T-3045, but once again... T-3485 using its ability to not only maneuver a lot quicker, but able to just, you know, turn its barrel. Just get out of there. And I, I would be very surprised if they don't come in and just surround this thing. He's trying to kill it. I, I salute him for it. But alas, once again, two beats one and you are way outside your comfort zone. So with that, fail, failed. Huh? See what I did there? You see what I did there? Okay. Anyway, there, he's doing, he's probably going to lose this match. It's not going to go his way. Volk Squad's going to capture territory, but, or, nope, he's going to try to engage. For Camel, we're going to try to help, but no, he's not. Why? Okay. He keeps doing this, and I'm going to point out. Throwing grenades are helpful if you're going to be in a prolonged fight. When it's your last guy and the enemy can simply move out of the way, there's no reason for the enemy not to move out of the way. If you're in a giant fight with a lot of units and you throw the grenade to kind of help turn the tide, then it makes sense. Or a surprise grenade when you throw it through a bush on, on, on an enemy that's not even engaged and it does damage. Like what the Soviet player was doing um, with the satchels. He threw it and he was actually able to get a good kill He was, while the guy was busy moving his armor. Or earlier, when actually his Volkswads were throwing grenades over here and kind of causing damage. It made sense. But in this scenario, you're the last unit. It doesn't. Because he's simply going to see it and move. When the when the enemy's preoccupied, it's the perfect time. But when they literally, when you're you're on the fast retreat and that's your last weapon, it's no good. Use grenades as surprise or confusion. Do not use it as a last ditch need to win this game because they're just if they're already busy and preoccupied with the fight, they're gonna see it and move. Or a good player would. Let me double check their ranks real quick. What are your ranks? Okay, so yeah. The fail should be doing better, and he's not. And that's why I love this game. And a quote, which no, it's not believing the B4, but it's one I, I, I don't say as often as I should. Rank doesn't matter in this game. And just a better player can easily trounce a, a guy that's played this game for hundreds, if not thousands, of hours. Which, thank you, by the way, for supporting me in doing CH2 replays, because I've been able to do this for thousands of hours. Yeah. Man, think of what I could have... I could have gotten another college degree with that, with that amount of time. 
Oh, man. Why do you choose to spend your time on? But hey, thanks guys, seriously. You guys rock. Speaking of not rocking, um, I see a... Oh my god, I see a slaughter going on. G3045 is very potent against infantry. Oh no. We're kind of getting some nice hits, but T3045 is still going to just keep firing at will. Penal troops not going to move in, but the... I love how this Panzer Headquarters is even facing the wrong way. It's like, you figure it would face this way, like, where the enemy would come from to be effective. Also, if I was him, I actually would have placed it out here. Before you say, Grayshaw, why would you do that? Guard the ch guard this key uh, point right here so you don't disconnect territory, and guard this point right here so you keep the munitions. That's what I would have gone. Now, again, the CH2 fail has a ton of fuel. He could very easily save up and get a Panther and go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but then I look at ABU and he has not one, not two, but three T-3045s, and I see a base charge coming in from a decent flank. Again, while the he's busy over here launching in a major assault, the T-3045s can easily come in from the flank, hit him from the side, and just wreck him. Because again, just kill the base flak, come in here, maybe kill his main base, which would be ter would be terrible, but hilarious at the same time, and then also knock out the truck. Again, just kind of like a hit and run move, but that's what I could see occurring. Because, uh, or a surrender. We have, uh, double MGs coming in, which is hilarious. He's leading the charge with MGs. These guys, even, like, right now are like, this is a bad idea, and I agree. Oh, look, T-3045 is rushing in. The poor Volk squad trying, but again, it's a, it's a tank. It's, yeah, hate to break it to you. You're not going to do all that well with it. You're going to try to heal, but they, they kind of fix that so you can't heal as quick. So, uh... Yeah. Say goodbye. Poor Flack never stood a chance. Rekai Warfare is going to try to hold out, but the T 3045s with their quick move aren't just going to escape. Or they should. Yep, they're blitzing. But the other two T-34s know that... Oh my god, yeah, this guy's a good player. And they're like, okay, cool, open fire. I swear, they're, they're probably going to probably gonna kill over Rekai Warfare's, and then he's going to surrender. Ah, some good shots. I'm force him to retreat. Mortar coming down and knocked out the MGs. Remember that mortar that still he has in his base? Yeah, he didn't move it. And before you say, oh, great shot. Only the OKW had something. He does. Yeah, it's called either heavy artillery or, uh, wow. Or, uh, what's it called? Support gun. God damn, I, I couldn't think of the name. Wow, it's only 270 now? Wow, they, they made it cheaper. Okay, cool. In any case, guys, that's game. Uh, no, fail, you sucked. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's a, that's a headline. No fail, you sucked. Um, honestly, you could you need more frontline infantry. You failed at infantry assaults, and when you did have armor, you over you overextended your line, allowing the enemy to flank and easily kill a unit that could not a maneuver at high speeds or b turn its gun. So it was very easy to flank and knock it out. You had a good defense system for armor. I'm not saying you didn't. But you got it a wee bit too early in my opinion. And the, I'm not saying one, one is fine. Two is a little overkill, especially before the 10 minute mark. Um, and then as well, if you would have gone more far on the infantry, you could probably have captured more territory, which allowed more upgrades, allowed more grenades. And also your grenade. Uh, like I don't really talk about grenades all that much, but yeah, your grenade throwing was not that great. Uh, in the beginning was fine because the Soviet player wasn't used to it, but ABU quickly adapted. And once see that happened, yeah, your bundle grenades and whatnot just weren't as effective. Um, so you kept throwing them and he just simply saw it, moved out of the way. It blew up. Maybe he lost one unit or one guy in the squad, but otherwise his satchels did way more against you. Like just overall, let me double check the Soviet player's kills. Yeah. Uh, not too, like you got more damage probably because again, you were fighting armor, um, but yeah, he murdered you, and yeah, 64 kills, never lost a penal squad, there you go, in any case, guys, that's game, I want to thank you for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed, this has been Grayshot17, and I'll see you all next time, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons boards real quick, like Ace, Sean, Tim, Leo, uh, Nick, Carter, uh, Sejones, and... Joey. I probably added someone who I forget and probably left, but whatever the case may be, you support me at one time, so I'll say it again. I'll say it at the end of the video, but 
again, thank you so much for your awesome Patreon support. In January, yeah, it's it's the worst month for YouTube. But once again, thank you for support because you're helping me get through this month. And I'll see you guys next time. Before this video ends, I want to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters like Ace, Leo, Tim, Sean, Sejones, and Nick. Thank you guys so much for your awesome support, and I'll see you next time, guys.